Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Those are the words of Jesus Christ to disciples, to his disciples, to saved Christians, to born-again Christians. Okay? Those who truly belong to Jesus Christ. Say it a number of which ways. Um, again, I'm making some video clips here for younger Christians who maybe have not been challenged to think about this portion of scripture in the Bible at all, and I just want to do that. I just feel God wants me to do that um, so that you are aware of the importance of laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. It is crucially wise for us to be thinking about this, seeking God on it, and to be engaged in it. We're the only ones who's going to um, miss out on this exciting opportunity if we just want to bury our heads in the sand so to speak and not really get some revelation from God of the of the precious exhortation that Jesus is telling us Jesus isn't telling us to lay up rewards for ourselves in heaven as a command a lot of people maybe would teach it as a command I don't see it that way I don't have that revelation I think it's just a nugget of wisdom that God has given uh, all humanity but if you aren't saved, you're laying up rewards in heaven isn't going to do you any good. you got to get saved first, and then you can begin laying up rewards for yourself in heaven. Um, here's another passage where I've heard many Bible teachers, writers, stresses this as a command. And I think that's wrong. I think it's really wrong. I'm going to take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, starting in verse 16, and it says, Rejoice always. Well, that's not a command. That is the wisdom of God uh, saying that if you want to keep the devil off your back and maintain any degree of peace and joy and confidence in your relationship with the Lord, you'll be praying a lot because prayer is one of the most important weapons that God has given Christians to keep the devil at bay, uh, as is recorded in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, um, among other places, okay? But I just feel to share a little bit about then verse 17, pray without ceasing. Is that a command? Well, how do you, how do you constantly pray? Well, you got to work, you got other functions you got to do in this life to maintain. What's God talking about? Pray without ceasing. I've heard people say that's a command. And I know so many Christians struggle with prayer. They struggle in their prayer lives. Why? Because Satan wants them struggling in their prayer lives. Because he knows some things that a lot of Christians don't know yet. Okay? He knows that selfless prayer or unselfish prayer is laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. Furthermore, he also knows that if we aren't praying, it is prayer that primarily releases God's will into the affairs of mankind. God is sovereign and God does certain things without anybody praying, but there are other things that is God's will that he just won't affect until enough prayer is coming forth from his people, okay? And so it's a win-win situation to constantly be engaged in prayer, unselfish prayer. Uh, when we're young Christians, we get so discouraged because you, we pray and ask God for this and ask God for that and and, and we don't see a lot of these things happening the way we'd like to see them or if we see them at all. And so we get discouraged and we get into this swamp, this spiritual swamp of, well, does God answer my prayers? Does he not? Well, am I sinning too much? And, you know, and this and that and one thing or another. As long as we don't see that God is saying here, it is wise to constantly be praying unselfishly for others. Because when you do, you are laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven. I've seen many old people in nursing homes and uh, assisted living and or just rotting away, just waiting to get to heaven. And, you know, life is tough. I understand uh, that. But I just want to be used of God to help people realize that you got all that time in your hand. Every one of us has 24 hours. <laughs> of time on our hands. And if we can't take five minutes a day and pray unselfishly for others in need, 
we haven't arrived yet, okay? And I don't, I haven't mastered this, but I have the revelation from God that it's us who are hurting if we don't pray without ceasing, unselfishly for others. And the primary thing that I believe we'll get rewarded for is, is praying for the lost souls of unsaved people. We might not see family members or friends saved by the time they die, but that doesn't negate or take away the reward that Jesus is going to give us uh, once we're in heaven, okay? So we won't lose reward just because somebody refuses salvation, but our prayers might be the very thing God uses to help somebody make a decision for Jesus Christ, okay? So my friend, don't ever let old age keep you from praying. Let that be time where you can pray all the more. But let it be done by the Holy Spirit. If you're just doing it without the leading and unction and life of the Holy Spirit, you'll get worn out quick and then it becomes self-defeating and you'll struggle, really struggle. I should include in fasting as well, sometimes if we're able, and it takes, takes a lot of determination to fast, but when we fast for unselfish reasons, and even for our own needs at times, I know many times God has led me on a fast to break strongholds that affects finances and health in my life. That's not unselfish reasons to be praying and trusting and fasting for. So I've seen immediate rewards from fasting, but I also know that we can be laying up rewards for ourselves in heaven for, for our fasting on behalf of other issues beyond ourselves. So... But God has never told us in his word, fast without ceasing. He says, pray without ceasing. So my friend, just, just tuck that away. Seek God on that. Don't let the devil con you out of the wisdom, the priceless wisdom of praying for others. There's hurting people. There's people that need healing. There's people that need finances. There's turmoil, stress, depression, hopelessness in the lives of Christians because Satan makes sure uh, that that's happening, okay? It's mental persecution, spiritual persecution, um, okay? Well, I don't want to get any more into this at this setting. I want these to be short. So thanks for hearing me out. God bless you.